It's called the faith muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. So when you learn how to take risks, you know not everything's going to pay off the way you hope it will. Amen? Sometimes God don't even plan the outcome that you're planning, but he still wants you to leap in faith. The more you do that, the stronger it gets. Four things about a leap of faith. That's the title of my sermon. So open up your Bibles to the faith chapter. Everybody knows where that is, right? Amen. You in a faith church, so you should know Hebrews 11 is where you're going to go. Amen. Hallelujah. To talk about faith. So, faith is the assurance, and I'm going to read, she's going to show you probably the NIV version. I'm going to read a slightly different version called uh, a Revised Standard. But praise the name of Jesus, just, just deal with it. Amen. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. Amen. Another word for that, favor. And by faith we understand that the worlds were prepared or created by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. Amen. So I begin, you know, we always talk about this term, leap of faith. Amen. The leap. So I was curious about what uh, were the origins of this term, leap of faith. So I began to look it up, and not surprisingly, it came from a Christian. Amen. A theologian Christian, and who talked about, and his... his uh, thing was was we have to not depend on always empirical evidence that means what we think we can prove right by what we see or what we can prove another way sometimes we just have to say i believe and he said we have to take that leap of faith to from believing in what we can empirically prove and i'm quoting him poorly not really quoting him but to what we believe and that's exactly what faith is. We cannot always prove everything out. Sometimes we just have to trust. Hmm? And when you take a big leap of faith, usually it's in an area you haven't done it before. And it's difficult. But there's good things that come out of it if you're leaping in the Lord. Amen. Because we don't know where we're going, but we do know who's leading us. Amen. This is not a stupid leap of faith. Because we have trust in the one who's telling us to leap. All right. By faith, Abraham. This is called the roll call of faith, this chapter. By faith, Abraham offered, uh, Abel offered to God more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. And through this, he received approval as righteous. And God gave himself, gave him himself, amen, divine approval. God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but even though he died, his faith still speaks. So praise the name of Jesus. That's kind of like, amen, kind of like Elisha. His faith still spoke when he was dead too, because they threw that guy in on top of his bones and the guy came out alive. Amen. Amen. I can always remember which one that was, Elijah or Elijah, because Elijah they didn't find his body. You know what I'm trying to say. Praise the name of Jesus. But Elisha they buried. <laughs> by, faith Abraham, by faith Noah, verse 7, warned by God about events yet unseen, re respected the warning, and built an ark to save his household. And by this he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with faith, or that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. No map. By faith, he stayed for a time in that land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, 
as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundation, whose builder and architect was God. And by faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because she considered him faithful who had promised. Did you know that if you also consider him who promised as faithful, you also share in this same inheritance? Well, what inheritance? Am I going to move to, to, to Israel and claim a second claim on the land? No, not that inheritance, but the inheritance of the faith of Abraham. Amen. And what did Abraham receive? He received the power of life. He received the power of multiplication. Amen. He received the wealth and the land and the power of his enemies. Specifically, the enemies of God. What else did he receive? The impossible. He received that which defied normal understanding. And so if his own sons were his heirs, you are also an heir. If you believe with the faith that Abraham had. And that's what the Bible teaches us. That I, I didn't make that up. That we are heirs of the same promise spiritually. Because guess what? That we're all heirs to a new land. And that land is heaven. And that earth is the new earth. And it's all going to come. That's the end of time. But it's going to be here. And we're going to. But did you know this? Before this earth passes away. The Lord will come back and establish his kingdom and rule, it says, with a rod of iron. And guess who is ambassadors? And guess who is governors? And guess who is senators? And guess who? Well, he don't really, we ain't going to vote on nothing because Jesus is going to tell us what to do. But I'm just telling you, who you think is going to run that? It's going to be the Christians. That's who it's going to be. Because God's going to put his order in the earth first before he destroys it. Amen. Hallelujah. And why do you think he's going to do that? I think he's going to do that to defeat the argument. Well, if there wasn't so much evil in the world, we would, all, we would all be all right. We, everything would be good. But what's going to happen at the end of that? Satan will be released and tempted and man will be tempted again. And that's going to prove that it wasn't about what God didn't do. It's about what man chose to do. Okay, that's too much theology for this Sunday morning, right? So we're going to move on. We're going to move on. So what it is, is that I want you to think about this. If Abraham had stayed in the city of Ur and he never moved out, there's something that he would not know. He would not know who he truly was. Because, see, according to the way he lived and where he was at in his life, his name was Abram. That's who he was. That's who everybody knew, knew him as. But at a certain time, the Lord came and showed him a vision. Hallelujah. And he showed him that vision because he moved out and stepped out of where he was. And said, I'm not only, I'm going to take you to this land, yes, and I'm going to make you descendants many. But now I'm going to show you how many descendants I'm going to give you. And he took him outside and said, look up at the sky. Hallelujah. Can you count the stars? No, I can't count the stars, Lord. That's how your descendants, descendants will be. And then he changed his name and he called him Abraham. The father of many. Amen. Amen. Now his, his descendant Jacob also had that same experience. His name got changed from deceiver. Amen. To what? Israel. Because he struggled with God and man and overcome. And that's what the name Israel means. He struggles. So we have to have a leap of faith in order to know who we really are. You'll never know who you are in safety of where you're at. You'll never know. You'll, you'll never be free as you should be. You'll never be as powerful as you should be. You'll never be as knowledgeable as you should be. You will never completely fulfill what God has for you to do in life unless you take a leap of faith. I truly believe, I know, that the best healing that I ever got in my life and the best restoration is when I began to take greater and greater leaps of faith to find inner healing for, for the things that happened to me. If I wouldn't have stretched out of my comfort zone to go do that, if I would have just sat and waited God for it to deliver it to me like a pizza, I'd have never got free. 
I had to go seek it out. I had to do things I wasn't used to. I had to do things I wasn't comfortable with in order to be free. And you're going to have to do that too. That's the way it is. If you're going to have a successful business, what you're going to have to do, take a leap of faith. You have to do it sooner or later. It's going to grow. Right? Huh? If you're going to have what the Lord wants you to have, you're going to have to do something. Taking a leap of faith is scary. It's scary. If, if it wasn't scary, no faith would be required. But you know what is more scary than the leap of faith? The life of regret. You don't want that. Take a risk in the Lord. Huh? Listen to what he says. Do what he says. When he says, trust, go do this. Don't wait for all the evidence to appear. All evidence that prove it's going to work will never come, especially if it's from God, because God's going to require you to at least have some faith. If you want to know who you truly are and who you were truly designed to be, take the leap of faith. Do what the Lord says. Okay? Okay, it says this. Let's skip to verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, who had received the promises. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son, through which the promise is supposed to come, right? Of whom he had been told, it is through Isaac that the descendants shall be named for you. Amen. Not Ishmael. He considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Not literally, because he didn't literally kill him, but figuratively, he did receive him back from the dead. And by, f- let, me, let me say this. People who like to say, what kind of God? Would ask, um, what, have you ever heard that before? Yeah. What kind of God would ask a man to give up his one and only son? The same God who gave up his one and only son and knew he wasn't going to let him do it none of the time, but did it to teach us and Abraham a lesson. What lesson did Abraham learn? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord provides. What lesson did we learn? Jehovah Jireh, because the Lord provided Jesus at the sacrifice and the priests all together to bring us into the kingdom of God. So people who say that, they don't know the Bible. Why are you wasting time arguing with them? There is a spirit. Listen, somebody who's always offended by everything, that's called the spirit of offense. I'm not trying to get all demonology on you, but it is. They ain't going to learn nothing. They ain't going to hear nothing. They ain't going to know nothing. You're going to waste your time. What you do is pray for them that God breaks them so then they can hear the word. You can't convince nobody who don't want to know the truth in no way. But look, by faith, Abraham offered up his... Think about how fearful that is. Think about God, the same God. Listen, the same God who said, nope, send Ishmael away. Isaac is the one whom I'm going to create this nation through. I gave you this. It was a miracle. Now, this same God who gave you everything you got, who helped you rescue your nephew from kings, right? Who helped all, all this thing. Now he's asking you to give up the one thing he actually gave to you that is the most precious thing. Don't you think that Abraham, I know, I, I know this Bible says that he believed he could receive him back from the dead. That's faith. Praise God. But I have to believe at least part of him trembled a little bit. Amen. Part of him, I think, just like Jesus, although he knew what the Lord was going to do, I believe he knew it. Yet, walking through that part where he is separated from his father, when he went through all that other stuff, maybe even the physical pain, he still sweated blood. It wasn't easy. But when, but when Abraham came through it, praise God. Think about that. Think about when it was all over and done and he received Isaac back 
and he got in the ram from the bush. Think about that moment when he said, now I've seen you in a new way, God. Listen, a leap of faith will require you to act despite your fear. But it will also cause you to overcome your fear. In fact, if you look in business, you look at some of the people. I was going to give you an example, but I'm, I was making this uh, sermon a little bit shorter one. But um, there are many examples of people who failed and failed and failed and failed. Look at the life of Abraham Lincoln, for example. Just look that up. Till finally, they overcame. Think, there is a muscle. It's called, amen, it's called the faith muscle. And the more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. So when you learn how to take risks, you know not everything's going to pay off the way you hope it will. Amen? Sometimes God don't even plan the outcome that you're planning. But he still wants you to leave in faith. The more you do that, the stronger it gets. Then until you find people who are some of the most successful people, say for instance in business in our world, they'll lose a billion. They're like, well, you know, you know I'll make it back. You know, I read some of the stories, you know, different people in the media, Elon Musk, different ones we study about and read about. They lose money. They're like, well, it'll come back. Right? That's, you think that's so casual of them, but they've exercised that faith muscle. And it works to some degree, even if you're not a Christian. But when you're a Christian and your faith stems in the one and only God, then you can't fail. You just have to exercise your faith. And learn to take that risk when the Lord says do it. And you'll build, your faith will get stronger and stronger. And your fear will never overcome your faith then. I have to say, I'm not at that point that my fear never overcomes my faith. I'm not there yet. But I'm working on that. That's the second thing. You will overcome your fear if you learn to leap in faith. All right. So then it says, by faith, Isaac invoked blessings for the future on Jacob and Esau. And Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave instructions about his bur- burial. And what was that? Take my bones with you. That was the instructions, right? And by faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. I don't usually um, cross over too much into politics because I don't believe it. But I will say this. When you know the Bible says something is wrong and it comes up, then you have to stand by the Bible. I'm not asking you to stand by the Democrats. I'm not asking you to stand by the Republicans. I'm not asking you to to stand by a party. I'm asking you to stand by what is right and what is wrong. And if the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong. If this Bible says this is what God created, this is how it is to be appropriated, This is how your money is to be appropriate. This is how your body is to be appropriate. This is how your sexual identity is to be appropriate. This is how all these things fit into this plan. Then that's God's plan. That's not my political opinion. That's not my uh, thing. It is God's plan. And so I have to follow what God says. That's the same thing Abram had to, uh, I mean Moses, we just read, had to do instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures. He had to say, no, imprisoning these people is wrong. Y'all are wrong. And what happened to him? Did he suffer for it? Amen. Yes, he suffered for it. But in the end, God brought redemption. Amen. So faith sometimes, the leap of faith is, to, is a leap into danger. But your life won't be boring. That's the third thing. If you take the leap of faith, your life will not be a boring life. You will experience excitement. You will experience freedom. Because really, when you put it all on God and do what he says, then you got the freedom. What's the freedom? The freedom is not to worry about what everyone thinks. 
Because you can't make everyone happy. You know that, don't you, saint? You can't make everyone happy no matter what you do. So you better be worried about making the Lord pleased. Because if you please God, you don't have to please everybody else. And in the end, when you stand before the judgment throne to receive your treasures of what you did that passed through the fire as your rewards in heaven, the crowns of which you were cast at the feet of Jesus, then it won't be your brother there, nor your sister, nor your mama, nor your daddy, nor your best friend, nor your favorite politician, or your favorite sports star. None of them is going to be there with you. You can't blame nothing on them. All you can do is say, this is what I did, Lord. This is what your word said. This is how I appropriated. And that's going to be between you and the Lord. So better to please the Lord. If you take a leap of faith, your life will have freedom. You won't be bound all the time. So what happened in the end? Look at verse 32 of Hebrews 11. And what more shall I say? This is summing up the roll call of faith. For time would not, would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Barak, Samson, David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouth of lions. Who was that? Amen. Quench raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by, back by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. And others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. And they were stoned to death and they were sawn in two and they were killed by the sword. And they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all of these, amen, all of these didn't get what you got. And you know what they got? You got Jesus. Amen. They, you, got this, you got to be the beneficiary of that grace. And that grace is going to kill you the rest of the way. And you will, the last thing is you will achieve great things if you commit to leap in faith. You will achieve great things. Think about, think about the faith of Daniel. Listen, when he told uh, the administrator over him, don't bring us any of these foods. Bring us such and such foods and then test us to see if we aren't healthier, what happened? That was a leap of faith. Because, you know, that administrator over them would have been killed. And they would have been punished or killed if they refused this program. But what happened? God met them. So that was a tiny leap. Might not have been as tiny as you think. But Hallelujah. By the we get to the close, closer uh, on into the story of Daniel, and what does he do? He has high position in the kingdom. Everyone loves, especially the king, loves Daniel. What happens? The king gets tricked and makes an edict that no one can pray to any other god besides the gods of the Medes and the Persians. And what does Daniel do? You think Daniel was stupid? I don't. Daniel knew exactly. He knew exactly that he was going going to do the same thing he always did and honor God ahead of every other person. And he opened up the windows and he prayed just as loud as he prayed before and he got thrown in the lion's den. But the Lord rescued him. Hmm? Hmm? Y'all read the story of the founder of Apple Computer, how people thought he was crazy? You should read that. You don't think Rosa Parks sat down on the bus, she didn't know exactly what was going to happen. She might not know exactly, but she knew something. You understand? So a leap of faith is a leap of faith. If you're going to do something in this world, you're going to have to take leaps of faith. And if you're going to do something for the kingdom of God, you're really going to have to take a leap of faith. And you're going to have to do what the Lord says. And he ain't going to lay it out all for you. 
He's just going to say, obey me and trust me. And if you trust him, you will achieve great things. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says this. This is, Deuteronomy was the closing chapter. I've been studying this for a while. Of Moses' life where he, he's saying his final stuff before he dies and they go into the promised land. And of course, then he appoints Joshua and the, the Lord encourages Joshua. Be strong and very courageous, it says, and do not be afraid or terrified because of them. Them who? Those in the land. Those things in your life that are standing in the way of God doing what he wants in your life. Don't be afraid of them or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Listen, it may feel like he's left you, but if you if he said leap and you jumped, He's still with you. It just looks tumultuous right now. He'll steady it. Amen. He'll either catch you or give you wings, one or the other. He'll do something if you believe enough to trust him. Trust him. Have faith in God. Stretch out beyond what you know. Be courageous. To leap is to defy the gravity of doubt and to reach for the favor of heaven. And that's the only way you'll get it. The favor of heaven comes from faith. When you move because you trust God, God sees that and he'll reward it. Let me tell you what. There are sometimes people started out wrong, but they believe God. And God, you know what God did? He didn't destroy them. He just course corrected them. And they fulfilled what God called them to in life. So my closing word to you today is look for the opportunities to take a leap of faith. Well, if you you can't take a leap, take a small hop. Amen. Amen. Take a small hop. Train that faith muscle until you are doing great things for the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you right now to touch us. Fill our hearts, Lord. Visit our website at www.pathwaytolife.net or give us a call at 334-262-4569. Please give us the title of the sermon when ordering. Thank you for watching Pathway to Life. If you're in the Montgomery Metro or River Region area, we invite you to join us at Bethel Pathway Church. Our service times are Sundays at 11 o'clock a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. Visit our website at www.pathwaytolife.net. Come, you will be blessed.